glorified. Dear brothers and sisters, I greet all of you, joyously greet all of you on this great feast of the Nativity of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. We celebrate many things in today's feast. We celebrate God taking flesh, taking our nature, taking upon himself the nature that he gave us, pure and clean, but that which we corrupted. And he takes it upon himself to restore it to its beauty. We celebrate God coming into this world to be with us. The Holy Prophet Isaiah proclaimed centuries earlier, God is with us. This is a marvelous thing. In our sicknesses, in our lowliness, in our abandonment, in the craziness of this world, God is with us. Despite all of the wars, despite the hatred, despite all the things that torment us, God is with us. Despite the fact that we experience physical death, God is with us. We celebrate likewise that through the birth, the nativity of our Lord, God gives us light. He gives us understanding. He gives us wisdom to see that all that is shiny and beautiful and earthly in this world is all but vanity. For it perishes, it turns to dust and ash. And we are given wisdom, understanding, the light of reason to see this and to order our lives in a rightful way. We celebrate at the nativity of our Lord the fact that the all-powerful, all-knowing, infinite God does not judge the earth, does not condemn us in our sins, does not forsake us even though we have long forgotten about Him, long have forsaken Him, long ago have decided to live as stubborn, hard-necked people without Him. Rather, he comes as a humble and little child. He doesn't come as a glorious soldier of warfare. He doesn't come as a rich, powerful man. He comes into this world like all of us come into this world. Humble, naked, and tiny and vulnerable. Why does he do this? To really be with us is to really understand us. And he shows us that he lives, lived in this world just like we come into this world. During the Antiphons, the second hymn that we sang at the beginning of liturgy, one verse is really remarkable. Well, what isn't remarkable in the hymnity, hymnity of orthodoxy? But one special verse in today's hymn is glory and wealth dwells in his house. Christ is born in a stable, in a cave. He is laid in a manger, in a feeding trough for animals that is filthy. And we sing glory and wealth are in his house. How is this so? What is his glory? His glory is in his humility. His glory 
in, is in His mercy and condescension toward us. His glory is His love that He shares, holds for all of His creation. And what is His wealth? His wealth is the power of righteousness over sin, the power of holiness, the power of mercy, the power of forgiveness. Because He comes into this world, God comes into this world at a time when the world hated God. In many ways, the world still hates God. But yet He comes into this world through His mercy and compassion. And that's His wealth. We, brothers and sisters, live our lives searching, chasing, running after glory and wealth. We run after the best positions. We look for the highest paying jobs. We sacrifice, literally sacrifice, the God-given time and talents for the pursuit of these things. And they pass away. And here we spend our life, we spend our days running after things that we can never take with us. Running after things that will ultimately lead to our destruction. Because they lead us away from coming to know God. If we spend all of our time searching after these things, we have very little time, very little resources, very little strength to search for God, to come to know Him. We have very little strength available for prayer, for reading of Holy Scripture, for coming to church, for in obedience following God's will because we're too busy following our own will. We're too busy chasing after these things that are just ultimately dust and ash. Yes, we need to work. We need to study. We need to support our families. We need to give in to a certain degree to all the demands of this life. But many times we live our lives as though this is it. We live our lives as though Christ was not born. We live our lives as though we place these things as the goal of our life. Our goal is not to search and to strive for glory and wealth. Our goal in life is to come to know God. Jesus Christ Himself says, This is eternal life, to know Thee, God, the Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent, to know Him. God in His mercy comes into this world so that we can come to know Him. And just as young people, when they come to know one another in young love, are wrapped up in that love, and dedicate their thoughts and their aspirations and their priorities according to that love, that relationship. We too, brothers and sisters, when we celebrate the Nativity, we celebrate God coming into this world so that we can come to know Him and come to love Him. And in that, we find eternal life. Through that, the gates of paradise are open to us. Because if we truly come to know God, not know about Him, not read about Him, but know Him, then our souls become transfigured. They change. Our souls are enlightened by the joy of understanding exactly what this means, that God comes into this world. What exactly it means that God has taken on our sins and forgiven us.
What does it mean that God has died for us and rose from the dead and defeated death for us? When we truly come to know that, then that knowledge is transfiguring. And we shape our lives according to it. We spend our time, our resources, our abilities on things that are important. Not the shiny things of this life, but on things like love and faith and mercy and compassion. Things like abstinence and sacrifice and perseverance. This is where we truly find glory and wealth because these are all God-given virtues. And we were, when we pursue them, we come to understand what life is all about. And when things become difficult, in sickness and sorrow, we don't despair. When the unexpected happens, we have trust in God. When people don't understand us, and make life difficult for us. We forbear. We stand strong because we know that God is with us. So you see, brothers and sisters, God coming into this world changes everything. Let us strive from this moment. Let us strive all of our lives to know God. Let us strive to come to love Him more. Let us strive to grow in faith and to shape our life, our thoughts, our aspirations, our goals, our priorities according to that knowledge of God. Let us, in so doing, prepare our hearts so that Christ can be born there. He was born in a stable, in a cavern, in very humble surroundings, very dirty, unsanitary. Many of the saints say, aren't our hearts the same, filled with hatred and little faith and doubt and selfishness? Those things, likewise, are corrupting. But yet our Lord strives to dwell in our hearts to take all that away. <laughs> Let us work with His grace. Let us pray. Let us love God. Let us show forgiveness and compassion to others. Let us live our faith, not once or twice a year, not fulfilling cultural expectations, but let us live our faith every day. And in so doing, Christ will be born in our hearts every day, bringing His love, His peace, and His light so that we may understand what truly life is all about and never despair, but always hold strong, always love, and take joy in knowing that Christ is born, that He is with us, and He'll never forsake us. Amen. Christos Rajdaitsa. Christ is born. Glorious Christos Rajdaitsa. Love you.